You know, as our real estate market continues to evolve and change with the economy and the weather, I find the question on everybody's mind is, is it a buyer's market? You know, my buyers think it is, my sellers hope maybe not so much, but the reality is a bit more complex, much like our weather here in Colorado this time of year. You know, it's always good to know where we're at in the real estate market, but it's essential to keep all the data in a historical perspective. Let's take a look at what's really happening locally here in the South Denver metro area so we can cut through all that noise that you're hearing and seeing in the news and on social media. And if you've watched my other market updates, I think you'll remember that we look at six statistics to measure what the market is doing and compare it to where it's trending. Then we can discuss how it's affecting our current local market and your goals. Now, the first statistic we want to look at is, of course, new listings or homes for sale. This, of course, relates to supply and demand, which has a big bearing on pricing. Currently, the number of homes available for sale is down by about 14.8%. Now this could be due to this time of year, it's fall as I film this, or simply a continuation of our tight supply that we've seen over the last few years. This number is lower than what it was on the market in September of 2021, and it's half of what was available for sale during the same time back in 2018. Under contracts or pending sales are also down by about 25.5%. Again, could be seasonal. They were down 5.5% back in 2018 at this time. But fears about a recession, rising interest rates, and of course the tight inventory could all be contributing to this number. Sold homes are also following this pattern and are down by about 24%. In 2018, they were down 15.8% year over year, starting to foreshadow the tight inventory that currently just seems to be the norm for us. However, once again, median home prices are up 8.5% year over year and holding over the last two months. And it was up 5.12% back in 2018. Now, this is very reflective of supply and demand. If we continue to have a limited supply of homes on the market, whether that's because of seasonality, builders behind in building, um, people staying in their homes longer, we're going to see home prices stay up. However, as we noticed this year, and the experts are predicting for 2023, the rate of appreciation is slowing. You know, another thing to be aware of that is keeping prices steady and not crashing is the odds of selling ratio. Now, the odds of selling is a ratio of homes for sale in each month, those that went under contract and closed, and those that remained on the market and didn't sell. Since this is a direct ratio of the amount of buyers and sellers in a market, the higher this number is, the more likely it is that a home will sell. And if this number is lower, that means the buyer will have more negotiating power and be less likely to have to compete against multiple offers. As you can see from this graph, the odds of selling remain high in all price ranges. Now also we want to look at median days in the market before accepting a contract. And that number has jumped to 17, up from 5 this time last year, and of course the 11 days back in August. So the days of a home going under contract in mere hours seems to be over. And then weeks of inventory are up to seven weeks. That's higher than the three weeks we had last year at this time and higher than the two weeks we had available earlier this year. Now we have to answer the question, is it a buyer's market? Well, let's take a look at these figures. New listings on the market, that's homes for sale or inventory, whatever you want to call it, are down 14.8%. And the amount of inventory is only seven weeks. So if you remember in previous market up updates that I did, a balanced market is five to seven months supply of homes for sale. Anything over seven months supply of homes would be a buyer's market. Currently, we're at seven weeks. And we can say, considering what we've gone through in the last few years, that one to three week supply, it may seem like a lot more is on the market. And we are trending toward a more balanced market, but we've got a long way to go. In fact, if you look at this graph, you can see the Denver Metro real estate market currently only has 33.2% of the homes required to make a balanced market. Red bar represents how many homes would need to be actively listed or available for sale to create a six month supply of homes. For balance, we can see that we're down 15,312 homes. September of this year, we only had about 4,900 on the market. Now, median days in the market really depends on your neighborhood. The median is about 17 currently, but in some Highlands Ranch neighborhoods, it's 27 days on the market before you get an offer or up to 50 days. It's going to be location and price affecting this number. This graph of the average days on the market by price range shows that most homes under 2 million are pending within approximately a month or less. This is the same as it was in 2018 where the average days on market was around 30 days. Oh, but like any statistic, these indicators are not standalone numbers. Seasonally, things slow down during the fall. Currently, higher interest rates, which are giving buyers pause and affecting affordability. Housing prices are still increasing. And add to that the unknown in our economy and, of course, the actions of the Fed moving forward. 
You know, and since I mentioned the Fed, in the latest report shared by Nicole Ruth of Fairway Mortgage, the Fed meeting minutes came out, and they're still seeing a large portion of our economic landscape being unfazed by higher prices. What does that mean? It means people are still shopping. They're spending, even with inflation up 0.4% month over month. Therefore, the message from the Fed is now that the Fed rate will continue to be raised through the end of the year and possibly into next year, possibly up to 5%. Their determination is going to have a big effect on HELOCs, businesses, car loans, credit card debt, and their continued effort to control spending and push us into a recession. You know, and Nicole also reports that mortgage purchase applications went down week over week, and they're now sitting about 7% behind the pandemic low. But job growth and wage growth are still holding strong, further pushing off a pivot from the Fed in the near future. It makes sense that housing demand is slowing down. However, those that are buying right now are getting a great deal. You know, if you're a buyer watching this, this is your opportunity here at Knocking. You have more to choose from. You can take your time. You don't have to waive any due diligence items. You may not be up against those crazy bidding wars that were going on in previous years. And first time home buyers, let's connect. Did you know that 45% of all transactions are now first time home buyers? They're back. Woohoo! You know, if you're a seller and you're watching this, the odds of selling your home are still very, very good. But you must go back to preparing your home for sale and positioning it correctly to make sure you attract the best buyer for your house. Check out my video on staging to sell for some useful tips. Hi, my name's Peggy Durstoff, and I'm a realtor with HomeSmart here in the Denver area, and I specialize in suburban living. As always, feel free to reach out with any questions you may have about our market and what the trends are moving forward. Simply leave your comments down below. I look forward to connecting with you. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, friends don't let friends rent.